Now, if you have ever done Wilcoxon rank, signed rank test, you would be wondering, how do you get this critical value table, right? Um, so that's what uh, I want to show you, and I also want to give you the code to compute the Wilcoxon signed rank test critical values. That is basically computing this table. So if you have a n, 5, 6, 7, and 8, or many multiple values of n, now you have different alpha values, and I want to, I want to show you how do you compute this 2 or 4 or 2 for each one of these n, a number that if you get that sum, um, you can reject the null hypothesis. So um, just to just to make it convenient, what I did was I took these values here, and then uh, I copied it here. So as you can see here, for n equals six and seven, I have a five, six, and seven, two, one, and four, two, just so that we can keep it handy. So six is two and one, seven is four and two. I'm just doing it for one-sided 0 0.05 or two-sided 0 0.05 as well. So um, for others, it should be pretty clear to extend it to other values of alpha or other values of n. Okay, so what we are trying to do here in Wilcoxon test, just to recall, if we have two measurements from two different um, experiments, we take the difference between x1 and x2, and then we write down those differences right next thing is we rank the absolute differences of these so maybe you get a rank of one two three four and then we compute the sign of this and then we make it one if it's positive zero so you, you get some values you multiply these two uh, let's call this as a b a times b and then you get the ranks, all the positive ranks here. And then you sum them and you take this and compare this value to this table. And if it is less than, if this value is less than the value that you see, then you reject the null hypothesis <coughs> that um, the intervention was not effective, right? So that's the whole setup. And if you don't know what is Wilcoxon test, you may want to stop and learn about that before you can follow what's really going on. But um, let's just continue here. So uh, I will take the case of n when it's equal to 6. What we are saying here is how can you get this value of 6, right? So you're computing and summing all the positive ranks, all the negative ranks, and you take the minimum of those two, and you get some value here. How do you get that value? So when you sum, let's just take positive sums. The way how you get this value is through the ranks of n, which is in this particular case, n happens to be 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So any combination of them may result in this sum. So a new random variable z we are defining here are that takes the sum z is a random variable that is the sum of power set of this n, 1 through n. So that's the random variable. That's what we are looking into. So in order to compute this, there are multiple ways you can do it. You can, do, you can brute force it. For example, let's take all the subsets of 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then this is one, um, and then let's take one, choose two sets, one, three, one, four, all that. Then you can take one, two, three, one, two, four, one, two, five, and then you can take all the subsets of four, one, two, three, four, and then five, and six. And six is, it happens to be one, two, three, four, five, and six. The sum of this would be 6 times 7 divided by 2, that's um, 21. So the cardinality of this set is 
going to be 2 to the power of n minus 1 because we can don't consider 0 so that happens to be in this case is 63 right. and the probability of getting that sum is the number of times that sum appears divided by 63 so here is a code that actually computes the um, I will link the github repository so if you want to compute it compute the power range for 1 through 6 this is all the different combinations now if you sum them that's essentially what you're doing in your Wilcoxon test now if you divide it by the total cardinality you get the probability of getting that sum so here is a code that actually computes each of the sum um, so when it comes to I'm computing it for six here Wilcoxon critical values what it does is it takes the alpha value and n and prints out all the probability of getting it and then prints out the cumulative sum as well so um, for one probability of getting one is one over 63 if you can um, if you agree with me so that probability is 0 0.016 um, and then you can't say anything with that so the one sided t tail and two sided tail value is zero so as you continue to go along the I'm printing the p value and the cumulative sum as soon as it exceeds 0 0.05 or 2 times the 0 0.05 in our case is uh, going to be uh, 0.1 then we capture that particular value and declare it for example the maximum sum is 23 so let's uh, 0.16 cumulative is 0 0.02 and yes there you go so this exceeded the one-sided tail value so it is the key is the two that's what we noted here right um, two for the one-sided t value and then uh, let's take a look and then if you continue along we want um, for the two-sided tail value is um, it's right there it's two times 0 0.02 is already 0 0.04 so we compute the two-sided tail value to be one so uh, that's the way how you compute the table here hopefully that was helpful and I will link the code to this you may want to take a look at how I'm computing the critical value table so now we can change it for any other values and then you get the um, same values here let's take a look for 10 for example let's do 10 through 11 so I'm printing it for all of them um, if you say don't print it for all just stop it as soon as you find the critical value so here um, for 10 it happens to be this happens to show that it's 11 and I'm getting 10 right and 8 the reason why they show 11 and it is one less here is because this is they actually truncate the value of 0 0.05 so since I'm computing the value of 0 0.05 as you can see here is if you truncate the value it's still you can go one more level up right so since it's 0 0.053 I already know that it exceeded 0 0.05 so I can compute the test value to be 10 and then uh, two tail value is 8 so um, there could be some kind of a confusion still you may not get everything what I'm talking about in this video but if you look at the code here uh, on the github and then study it a little bit further you may be able to understand what's really going on so just to walk you through the code here is when you compute the Wilcoxon critical test with the alpha of 0 0.05 and the n of 0.10 or, or 10 or 11 or whatever that you want to pass in um, I compute the m which is the maximum value which is 2 to the power of n minus 1 that's what we said that is the total cardinality of the power set then we look at the power set compute the sum of each of the power set in the dictionary and then go through the sorted array and then divide it by the 
divided by the um, m, which is the cardinality of the power set, and uh, and then I, as you work through the sorted array of the keys, you calculate the cumulative sum of the probability. Now, once if you calculate the probability, if one tail test exceeds the alpha value, you take one minus because you already walked ahead of it. And then same thing for the two tail test. So you compute the CR2. And then um, if you don't want to print all of them, it prints the last one. And then um, it, ex it returns the alpha one tail critical value and the two tail critical value, which I printed here. Of course, if you want to match it to the table, what you see it here, you can actually round C here to less than two, and then you may be able to adjust that to match this table, but that's not necessary for doing it. This is more precise than the tables that you see online. Uh, well, hopefully this helped you. I, um, I will link the YouTube on the YouTube video on the GitHub link and the table as well.